As we know, the GMC recently announced the release of a new medical degree doctor apprenticeship. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what it is, all the things that you need to know surrounding the issues around it, and if you're applying the things that you need to do to make sure you secure a place on this new medical apprenticeship. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name's Dr. Hilton. I'm a doctor and dentist, and this channel is dedicated to everything about getting into medicine and dentistry. So as you know, recently, Health Education England, H EE recently announced this quite shocking kind of revelation that they were going to be doing this apprenticeship. So what is the apprenticeship? So on the HEE website, they say, the medical doctor degree apprenticeship offers NHS organizations the opportunity to grow their future medical workforce and attract and recruit from a wider pool of people in the local community. It also gives individuals who for a multitude of reasons may be unable to attend full-time university a new route to train as a doctor. So this is like any apprenticeship where you train on the job as well as supplementing with studies outside of it to learn to become a doctor and reach the same standard hopefully as those who go through the traditional route of going to university. So why did they decide to introduce a program like this? Firstly, they wanted to widen participation. Universities have been trying to do this, but it is limited to the extent that they've managed to successfully roll that out. So the idea is that this rolls it out to make it available to more wide socioeconomic classes, to all different people from different walks of life, and basically open the ability for anyone who is good enough and wants to become a doctor to give them the opportunity to do so. Furthermore, it's going to help boost the workforce. Obviously, we won't go into the crisis that the NHS is having at the moment, but they are suffering from a real lack of doctors and workforce in general, and this might hopefully boost that. Also, this is actually quite an important point for the Institution for Apprenticeship Technicians England, so IFATE, because they are seeing, uh, you know, doctors are arguably one of the most skilled professions, and they are seeing, can we make an apprenticeship that even for one of those really skilled professions, we can put someone through and train them to make them the same level as a doctor who's gone through university. So it's an important trial for them to see if they can help roll that out to other professions to increase the skilled workforce that we have in the UK, and potentially that can improve the economy, because the more skilled workers we have, the better that is for our economy to grow. So another really important aspect is how is this apprenticeship going to work? Now at the moment the talks are still preliminary and they haven't finally released the exact specifications for what's going to happen but what they have released is that it's going to be a 60 months or a five year apprenticeship and it's going to be full time where you are working mainly in the hospital supplemented by university study. So the universities will kind of be involved with this. At the moment they have said that the requirements to get in are going to be the same as traditional courses which is a really significant point and something that I'm going to discuss later because it is a bone of contention and a potential issue for widening access. Another thing that they've said is that the progress assessment, so the testing along the way, is going to be pass-fail and then the endpoint assessment, so the final exam to make sure that you meet the mark, is underpinned by the GMC and then on passing that you will get a full GMC license and the same privileges of practicing as a regular doctor who's gone through the old or traditional route so to speak. So later in this video I'm going to talk you through if you are thinking about going down this route what it means for you and how to apply but firstly it's really important to understand some of the potential issues surrounding this new apprenticeship. Now as we know uh, some of the details of what exactly or how it's going to work are still up for debate and have not been officially released yet. They're thinking that the first cohort at the very earliest is going to be September 2023. So still there's lots of time for them to kind of iron out all of those things and they say that the application for it is probably going to open around that time as well at the moment. But some of the issues that myself and my colleagues have been debating are things surrounding say employment. So in a few years time when we have both apprentices and the people who've gone via the degree route, who is going to be more employable? Because on the one hand the apprentice will have a lot more real world experience and hands-on experience versus maybe the traditional people is more what employers are used to and know. So who's going to be advantaged or is anyone going to be disadvantaged by that disparity in the way that they've gone about obtaining their degree? One of the biggest issues which I touched on earlier is if we're going to have the same entry requirements as the traditional course, how is that helping kind of access and widen access to people from different backgrounds, from maybe lower socioeconomic backgrounds or backgrounds that have traditionally less access to medicine? Because 
if people can't get the grades, grades are not just a financial thing, they are part of people's background and really the issue of people not meeting the eligibility requirements goes beyond just the financial. So how is this, if we have the same standards to get in, if they are exactly the same, how is that going to widen it to a different group of people because if those same people struggle to get in via the traditional route. Now later in the video I'm going to tell you about how we at FutureDoc are going to help people who are thinking of going down the apprenticeship route but it is important to understand that it's still going to be a high standard and a high barrier of entry for letting people into a course like this. Another question that arises is Given that the NHS is struggling for staff, how are we going to find extra staff who are going to train these apprentices? Because obviously that is going to be quite time consuming to, to find people to do that. And arguably, we've obviously got the funding to do this. So if we have that funding, is it not maybe a better idea to put that money into a current the current system that we know has worked but just finding ways to make that more accessible to those people rather than starting a completely new thing. Is that a possibility that we could do that? That's just one question that we could consider. Another really interesting point is that these apprenticeships are going to be applied to through the trust. So the same way that if you want to become a cleaner in your local hospital you apply on NHS jobs and find your local hospital. Now that is how they are going to do these apprenticeships and how you apply to them. So does it lend itself to nepotism or people having internal knowledge of some apprenticeships that are about to come out and maybe currying favour or gaining an unfair advantage by having that insider knowledge so to speak. So generally if you're ever entering a debate into whether this new medical apprenticeship is a good idea, I'm going to give you some ideas for some points for and some against having it. So some points for is that firstly you are getting paid while you do this rather than the opposite which is going to medical school and usually having to acquire student debt. So good pay, no debt. Although there are some question marks about its ability to widen access in the way it's hoping to, it does mean that some people who affordability is a barrier to them going to university means that they can now afford to become a doctor where they otherwise couldn't. The fourth argument for is that in this apprenticeship they will undoubtedly get more hands-on and more patient contact so a lot more real-world experience as we said. Now the final point that I would say is a four is that when I learnt my mo most when the things that I learnt in medicine that stuck with me most were those where I read it in the textbook and then saw a patient with it so I can picture as I'm reading everything in my textbook the patient that I've seen that has all of those symptoms so I can visualize it so that means that it sticks with you more and just having seen it in real life means that you learn it so much better than reading it from a textbook so that is probably the final argument for that I think is a really strong one for uh, being in favour of the apprenticeship. So on the other hand, if we are widening access, that means that the potential people that can apply to it are surely greater in number, which means that the apprenticeship itself could actually arguably be more competitive than going through the traditional route. Obviously, we're yet to see how that goes, but I can imagine, I can see a world where the competition ratios may actually be a lot more favourable to go via the university route. As I said, currently some of the details are currently either up in the air or haven't been released yet but there is a bit of uncertainty around the guarantee of getting a job at the end of the apprenticeship and also whether people who go via this route will be able to work abroad as doctors with the qualification. Other potential drawbacks are that the apprentices, uh, this might be a good or a bad thing for them, but they maybe miss out on the university experience which can be quite maturing in itself. Also because you are thrown in at the deep end, I'm sure they will grade this, but you will be having patient exposure and responsibility very early, which might be overwhelming and make it very stressful. And that could lead to maybe a high dropout rate and high attrition at the start, or maybe even halfway through or right at the end. So then I actually went and asked my colleague what they think about the medical apprenticeship, and they came up with the following few points. So the majority thought that it's a good idea and a possibility to improve and diversify the work Force. They were also concerned that maybe the opportunities to people going through the apprentice route might be limited compared to those of going through the traditional route. And then when I asked them if they had to choose whether they would go down the apprentice or the whether they go down the traditional route, I got a 50-50 split and they were basically undecided. There was no clear favor as to which one they would go for. So if you're thinking about applying down this route, what are the next steps and what's the likely time horizon for everything? 
As we said, the first cohort is likely to start in September 2023. So like I say, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because I will be keeping you up to date with anything, any developments in it, any of the new endpoints that they reach as they come out because there is a lot going on and a lot of development in this. But right now, if you go on the Institute for Apprenticeships website, they have released a few things saying, this apprenticeship standard is fully approved for delivery, but the ESFA is not yet permitting apprenticeship starts on it. Start on the apprenticeship will be possible when a suitable endpoint assessment organization has given an in principle commitment to deliver assessments on this apprenticeship standard. But essentially what that means is that they are deciding currently on how they're going to deliver the program. They're expecting a start date kind of in about a year's time. And actually at three years, they're going to do a full review of it to assess how effective it is and basically make any changes that they feel are required to that system. So like I say, no matter what the standards are, you are still going to need to keep up to date with the profession and keep a high standard of application, which is why I would recommend that you check out the rest of the channel. If you want to find some really good resources to help you with your med school application or medical apprentice application, I recommend you check out this video here, which is going to orientate you to all of the things that we have on the channel. Otherwise, if you're going down the traditional route or preparing for some apprenticeship interviews, I recommend you check out this playlist here where I talk about all the common themes, traits, and questions that they ask when they're trying to ask who's going to make a good doctor and exactly how you should answer them to shine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.